This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The galaxy in the grimdark future of the 41st millennium is home to uncountable obscure alien species and monsters, many of which have gone completely undocumented, or very few accounts of them actually exist. These are also aliens and monsters that you've most likely never heard of. In this series that I'm doing, we're eventually gonna talk about every single one of them. But today we're talking about a race of cannibalistic mutants known simply as the Shadow Kith, a species that's famous for attempting to lure rogue traders to their planet in order to eat them alive. It's rumored that the planet that they call home used to be a pleasure world for the Imperium wealthy elite that lived on the fringe of the galaxy. This little hedonistic slice of paradise was simply known as grace. It was rumored that nothing was forbidden here, and no matter how hedonistic or depraved your desires, you would be able to experience them on grace, away from the prying eyes of the Imperium. But the wealthy aristocrats that used to live here have seemingly vanished. Rumors have been spreading through hushed whispers that anyone who would be brave enough to venture to Grace's surface would find the ruins of thousands of palatial estates, each one filled with hordes of treasure and technology, just sitting there rife for the taking. But what exactly was Grace, and why was it seemingly abandoned? What happened to the wealthy individuals that used to live here? And who exactly are these cannibalistic mutants known as the Shadow Kith? Well, today we're gonna be answering every single one of those questions. But first, a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, and then we're gonna dive headfirst into the grimdark. Stay tuned. Designing your own website can be incredibly complicated, and most people don't have the time to learn how to code just to get their site off the ground. Squarespace takes away all of that hassle by allowing you to start building your website off of one of their award-winning templates. Templates that, by the way, were made by professional designers, and they have hundreds of different templates to choose from. And from there, you can start customizing it to make your website more distinctly yours. If you already know how to drag and drop images on a computer, then you're already overqualified to make a website on Squarespace. And when it comes to actually managing your website, Squarespace takes away all of the hassle and boils it down to simple and easy to understand analytics to show you how your website is performing, as well as providing you the resources that you need to take it to the next level. They have all kinds of tools to help you do some pretty cool stuff, like maximizing your search engine optimization, designing your very own email campaign, or helping you maximize your social media strategies in order to help your customers stay up to date with you. Squarespace plans start as low as $14 a month, and they're so confident in their service that they even offer a free trial to make sure that Squarespace is right for you. If you decide that a professional looking website is something that you want, then go to squarespace.com slash Weshammer or click on the link in my description and then use the code Weshammer to get 10% off your first website or domain. Thanks again to the awesome people over at Squarespace for sponsoring this video and let's get into the grimdark. The Coronis Expanse is a vast section of space that remains mostly unexplored, filled with forgotten worlds that have gone untouched for millions of years. Now each of these planets is just as likely to hold a vast treasure trove of ancient alien archaeotect as it is to be rife with incredible danger. From unspeakable ancient evils that hunger for the flesh of men, to malign and treacherous Xeno species that have staked a claim on the world for themselves. To be a rogue trader within the Expanse is to live a life fraught with danger, but it's also to know something that very few within the Imperium can truly claim to have. Freedom true, unquestioning freedom. So alluring is the life of adventure that a rogue trader pursues that many children of noble households will use their birthright of considerable wealth to fund their own glorious expeditions into the deep, dark, and forgotten places of the galaxy. Now, one such rogue trader was known as Auspice Corda. Now, in person, she's said to be something of an anomaly. By all accounts, she is objectively beautiful. But there's something about her that defies her grace. A cold uneasiness permeates off of her. And although she looks deceptively youthful, her cold gray eyes end up betraying her true age. They speak volumes of everything that she has seen in her impossibly long life, and should be the first indicator of her single-minded, relentless pursuit of her goals. Corda was ruthless, not just in trade negotiation, but also in battle. An incredibly dangerous woman who didn't hesitate to cruelly remind others of just how terrifying she could be to any who would dare cross her. She seems to only care about human life when it can somehow increase her ever-growing coffers. And through her relentless pursuits and numerous crusades, she's ended up as one of the most wealthy and influential rogue traders within the Coronas Expanse. And at her disposal is one of the largest fleets in the entire region. During one of Corda's numerous expeditions into the Expanse, she discovered a world that did not appear on any of the maps, and by all accounts, had gone undocumented by the Imperium. Now this fact alone 
would make the world incredibly valuable, regardless of what its surface was actually like. Additionally, the planet was incredibly far from any established warp routes, meaning that for any person that would take up residence here, it would be incredibly unlikely that they would ever be disturbed. Now, Korda decided that such a world could net her an absolute fortune. She would end up keeping the world a secret, its location known only to her and the crewmen that were with her on the day of its discovery. Now, that being said, the secret didn't stay secret forever, as she would then spread the word of the existence of a paradise, specifically to the lords, nobles, and anyone with considerable wealth and exotic tastes that were all too often frowned upon by the larger Imperium. For those who could afford Korda's exuberant prices, she would lead them to an oasis, the world that she named simply Grace. Many would end up taking Korda up on her offer, and as time went on, more and more of these nobles would end up getting ferried to Grace, each bringing with them inconceivable levels of wealth, physical possessions of the highest quality, and, of course, entire households of slaves. Over time, massive void shields would be constructed around each and every estate that was established. They were palaces of the galaxy's finest crystal and marble, and were erected all over Grace's surface, each and every lord carving out their own slice of paradise, where they would be free to indulge in whatever their heart desired, no matter how gluttonous or sadistic those desires may be. Korda would continue to spread the word of Grace, and over time, more and more nobles would escape to her world all eager to forget their previous lives under the judgment of the Imperium, their records wiped completely clean, an especially tempting offer for any who had been pursued by rivals, as they would simply disappear, their debts now impossible to collect on. Now, in reality, the world of Grace was kind of a mixed bag. On one hand, it was said to have a very stark beauty, like that of a mountainside or a magnificent desert. However, it was home to near constant storms, with some areas only being illuminated by the flashes of lightning. Outside of the protected bubbles and around each of the palaces, the native plant life was not incredibly diverse, as the planet for the most part was dominated by simple fungi. Whether or not this fungus was edible is kind of unknown, and experiments done in the future to determine its level of toxicity have come back inconclusive, and thus they relied on Corda for shipments of food. Shipments that Corda was all too happy to fulfill, at an exuberant markup. And the nobles were happy to pay it, of course. I mean, how can you truly put a price on paradise? Everything worked out for a while, supply lines were stable, and the Lords of Grace received near constant shipments of more supplies and food. Everything was going exactly as Korda had laid out. That was, until devastating warp storms ravaged the surrounding sector and crushed all of the supply vessels that were on their route to the planet. And the storms didn't dissipate and would eventually cut off all of the supply lines completely. The planet was sealed, and the gravity of Grace's situation slowly began to dawn on its residents. Any ships that they had were not capable of long journeys like Korda's fleet was, and even if they were, trying to navigate into the warp storms was a death sentence. Even if by some miracle they were able to survive unscathed, they had no idea where in space they actually were, as Grace's location remaining a secret was kind of the whole point. They were trapped, and they knew that Korda wasn't coming back for them. Years would pass, and the food that had been stockpiled on Grace was quickly starting to run out. As its population became more and more desperate and their technology began to break down, these once opulent aristocrats would end up becoming raiders, ransacking each other's estates. And when that failed to drive off their cravings, they eventually had to do the unthinkable. The Lords of Grace would turn to cannibalism in order to survive, first on the fallen, and then eventually onto their slaves. And after that, they began to eat each other. These were aristocrats that once ruled over vast swaths of planets, or even enormous criminal organizations, and they had been reduced to the profane existence of cannibalistic raiders. In time, their bodies began to twist and alter, reflecting their new degraded state. They became what are known today as simply the Shadow Kith. The Shadow Kith are still technically human, although many of the Majos biologists would more accurately categorize them as mutants. They are lean and emaciated, sinuous wraiths, covered in lean muscle, stretched thin under dark leathery skin. Their eyes have grown larger, more akin to that of a nocturnal predator than a human. And although humans turning into mutants is something that has definitely happened before in the 40k universe, this account is pretty strange as it really hasn't been that long since the planet of Grace became isolated. And most documented abhumans and mutants that the Imperium has categorized 
had their changes happen very slowly over time. Or, at the very least, there's a discernible cause and effect that led to the physical changes. Their transition into deranged feral creatures is far more pronounced than anyone could have possibly expected. It also just doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense that cannibalism alone could have caused the Shadow Kith to take on the forms that we know today. Now, not all of the Shadow Kith have completely lost their minds, as many of them still maintain a semblance of their original intelligence. And oddly enough, this is most prominently displayed in those who had access to their original food stocks. The slaves and servants that ended up surviving the raids by the wealthy elite seem to have undergone a much more radical transformation than the individuals on the higher end of the hierarchy. Despite this, it is perhaps those who remember who they once were that suffer the most cruel fate of all, as they have the knowledge that they soon too will be nothing more than a feral ghoul wandering the wastes of grace, a planet that was supposed to be their paradise, but is now their jail, and one day will be their tomb. What caused the population to become so monstrous is still unknown. Many individuals who have ended up researching the planet theorize that it might have something to do with the fungi that grew across the planet's surface, as the people who suffered a more dramatic change would theoretically have had to survive off of these growths. However, analysis of the fungi has unfortunately been inconclusive. Perhaps it was a combination of the fungi and the surrounding environment on Grace, Maybe it had something to do with those warp storms that cut off all of their supply routes. Or maybe Corda wasn't the first person to discover this place. Perhaps the Planet of Grace has a much darker past than we realize, and may just have some treacherous unholy secrets that have yet to be discovered. We unfortunately still do not know the truth of Grace, and perhaps we never will. Now, outside of the protective domes that once dotted Grace's surface, the planet is incredibly unforgiving and dangerous. The Shadow Kith roam across the world's surface, underneath its destructive storm cloud ridden skies. They trudge through freezing hail and dangerous storms, forever in pursuit of food. Their once prized weapons of impeccable artistic value have all but since fallen into complete disrepair as they've lost the knowledge in order to maintain them. They hunt in packs, seeking to overwhelm their foes through sheer numbers. And when they've located their prey, attacks from the Shadow Kith come lightning fast. Hordes of these foul creatures swarming out of the darkness to rip and tear at any source of food they can find. Rogue traders that find themselves on Grace end up getting completely overwhelmed and outnumbered, regardless of what high-tech weaponry they may have brought with them. Many of the once opulent palaces are little more than decaying ruins and have long since been cleared out of anything edible by the hordes of Shadow Kit that dwell in the dark corners and cave systems nearby. There are, however, a few that still remain intact, households that may have had a larger stock of food. They fight every day to hold the Shadow Kit at bay. Now, these palaces continue to broadcast signals for aid, shouting into the void for someone to save them. Every last drop of power in their slowly fading generators going to this one desperate last attempt at salvation. If a fleet was to miraculously end up in range of these signals, they would be hit with an absolute storm of distress calls. The only problem is that many of the Shadow Kith that still retain enough intelligence to utilize the Vox systems also send out their own distress signals eager to lure unsuspecting visitors to the planet. Intertwined in their call for aid is the promise of riches beyond imagining, a planet covered in palaces and estates of incredibly wealthy individuals, primed with treasure and valuable resources rife for the picking. A tempting offer for a rogue trader, those who would be foolish enough to take the Shadow Kith at their words do end up bringing them a form of salvation, not in their rescue, but more so as a next meal. There's one account of a group that came to the planet's surface after hearing the distress calls. It was said that when they engaged with the Shadow Kith, the monsters would mimic the distressed voices heard over the Vox channels. They did this specifically to mock those who had come to their aid. Demonstrating the hedonistic Lord's capacity for remarkable cruelty was alive and well, despite their degradation into insanity. All those that would come to grace in search of riches beyond imagining would find out just what the Shadow Kith had learned so long ago, that the Planet of Grace is particularly good at crushing hope.